today we're making this simple elevator. It just hangs out until we jump on top of it. Then it starts to move. It takes us up to where we need to be. Then it stops once we're on the top. We can do whatever we need to up on this floor. And then when we go back to stand on it, it'll take us back down. And this will work over and over and over again. Essentially, this requires us to make three major things. Number one is a platform that moves back and forth between these two points that we see here. Number two is a way to stop that platform from moving when it reaches one of those points. And number three is making that platform start moving again once a player lands on it. So we're going to make a total of three scripts to make this work. A moving platform script, a parent player movement script, because otherwise the platform won't take the player with it, and the elevator trigger script. So let's get into it. We start off by making a empty, uh, because we're going to gather all of the needed game objects under this one empty. And it's going to just be called like elevator 2 in this case because i already have elevator 1 and under this we're going to then make our cube in this case it can be any mesh you want obviously but we're going to go with the cube shape it however the frick you like and then we're going to position it somewhere near the ground next we're going to create another empty within our empty and we're going to call that point one up here we're going to give it a visualization because it's not going to have a sprite or anything uh just any one of these will do i usually pick uh the red one because i like the way it looks and now we can see where this empty is in our uh, viewport here and we're going to copy and paste that empty calling the second one point two the elevator is going to be moving back and forward between these two points so let's just like put that one over there and now on the cube we're going to add a new component and we're just going to make a new script. So let's call it platform moving. Make a new script and double click to open up our new empty script. For a quick overview of what we're going to make, this is the entire code. So we're going to start by making a couple of variables. First off, we're going to make a public ball called can move. This will obviously influence whether or not the platform can move. Then we make a serialized field uh, and that's going to be a float for the speed of the actual movement for this platform. Then we're going to make a other serialized field which is going to be an integer and that's going to be the index for our start points. So whether it needs to start at point 1 or 2, theoretically the system will work with point 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, infinite amount of points for your elevator system. So if you want an elevator, they'll take you from point 1 to 2, but then when you get back onto it, it'll take you to the next point, so point 3. That'll totally work with the system as well. And then we're going to make a serialized field, transform array, and we call that points. Then we make a couple of private variables, that being a integer for i and a bool for reverse. This integer is going to be counting what our current destination point is, and this boolean is counting whether or not we're moving forwards or backwards through our transform points. In our start function, we're going to set our own transform position to be equal to points and then we're going to take the start point variable as our index dot position so now when the game starts the position of this object is going to be set to the position of whatever start point we give it and then also that i variable is going to be equal to start point now the actual movement is pretty easy and that is if can move this just checks whether or not the can move boolean is true we'll go transform position is equal to vector 3 move towards transform position points i position speed times time dot delta time that's a lot of words let's go through that real quick so our transform position is going to be set to a vector 3 move towards this is a function that just moves you towards a given position this first one is 
the position that we're at at the moment. The second is the position that we're going to be moving towards. So that's the index of our points array of the current target that we have, which is the integer i. And then the third value here is the speed at which we will be moving, which is our speed variable multiplied by time dot delta time so that it's frame rate independent. So that's the easy bit. Now we're going to be working on the system that'll help us move from one point to the next. So now that we are moving, we need to check whether or not we've actually made it to being at one of those points. So before all of that, we type if factor three dot distance values being transform position and points i position much like we have here this is just checking the actual distance between the two points we give here so this is the location of the object itself this is the location we're moving towards if that's less than 0.01 f we put f in there so the engine knows that it's a float value then we'll do something first off we said can move to false we've made it to our point so we're going to stop moving if i equals equals points dot length minus one we set reverse to being true and i minus minus takes one off the i value and then we return we don't do anything else so what we'll do here is we are checking whether or not our i variable is equal to points dot length minus one this is just the last index this checks whether or not that's the last point in our array if it's the last point, we know that we're going to have to go reversing through them back again. So we take one value of our i, so that we are going to start moving backwards. And then we return to break anything else that might happen in this update function. But else, if i is equal to zero, that means that we're back at the very start, we're going to do the exact opposite. So we're going to set a reverse. Quick little editing thing, i typed, reverse is true on the second part it needs to be reverse equals false obviously we're going to go i plus plus to increment it and then we still uh, do return but this only works for increment and decrement at the very ends of our system if we have three four five six seven eight nine ten etc points this won't work when you reach point number six so if neither of these are true we move on and we go if reverse is true we simply decrement i again i minus minus and else we simply increment i and now we have the entire moving platform coded so we have a couple of values exposed here so we can go points add two points and then we can just drag these empties that we've created before onto these values and i'll just take the transform out of them and we can say start point equals zero so element zero and then the speed can be two so now if we enable can move we should start seeing this thing move and we do and then when it reaches the top the other point it'll stop moving and we can enable can move again and it'll move back to its first position and as I showed before, assuming that we want more than uh, two points, so we can say copy this point over and just say that it moves diagonally down in this direction after that, like right over to this point. And then we can call this point number three. Simply in our array here, we make another index. We drag this over. So now when we're in game and we say you can move, we'll see this thing starts moving to its second point. But now when we enable can move again, it'll start moving towards the third point rather than just moving back towards the first. And then again, it'll start moving back to the middle point and so on and so forth. So now it's time to parent our character to this so that we can actually stand on it. Because if we don't do that, you'll be able to see uh, we actually just get booted off because we don't move with the platform. So in your platform, we make a new script, just call it uh, parent platform. And once again, double click to open it up. 
There's only a quick few lines of code here, and that is we can remove everything else. Uh, we can say on collision enter. It'll fill out the rest for us. We just go collision transform set parent transform. What this does is when something collides with the object that we are going to put this script on, that other object, which will in this case be the player, will be what this collision value represents. So what this is saying is the player, or it could be an NPC, it could be an enemy as well. It's transform, its parent will be set to the transform of this object so that when we move the platform, anything that's touching the platform will move with it. But then when we jump off the platform, we'll still be parented. So there's an easy fix for that as well. And that is on collision exit. We simply say collision, again, that represents the player or whatever jumps off of the platform in this case, dot transform dot set parent. And we simply type null which means that it's going to have no parent anymore at all. If this object had a parent before, that could be problematic. In most cases, it won't, but do be mindful of it. And it is as easy as that. So now when we jump onto this platform and we click on the can move, we move with the platform. So now literally the only thing left to do is making it so that this thing moves when we jump onto it. And for that, before we make a script, we're actually going to add a new box collider. We already have a box collider here, but this one is going to be a trigger. And when we press added bounding volume on this first one, we can also start editing this second one. And we're going to make this just a little bit smaller and sit on top of the actual platform. This way, it'll only trigger when we actually jump on top of the platform, rather than if we just bump into it, it'll start moving. That'll be very annoying. Once again, we'll make a new script and call this trigger platform. Double click to open a new script. And we're going to make one single variable here, and that is a platform moving. And we're going to just call that platform. Then in the start function, which I just deleted, but we do actually need that, we're going to set platform equals to get component platform moving. This will just check within this game object for a platform moving and set this variable to equal that. Then uh, on trigger enter, we just go platform dot can move equals true. And now when we jump on this platform, we'll see it'll start to move towards the next point. Then when it reaches that point, it'll stop moving. We have to re-trigger it, it'll move towards the next point. When it gets there, it'll stop moving. But then when we trigger it again, it'll start doing the same path, but in reverse. A very nice and flexible way to make elevator systems or whatever you want to use this for. It's also nice for things like platformers. In a 2D platformer project that I made recently, I made a couple of variations of this triggering script where things would uh, start moving when I stood on it. They would only move while I stood on it, that kind of stuff. It's a very flexible system just because it's split up in a couple of different scripts that can just talk to each other.